Hi, I'm Dr. Dina Stacer, and welcome to a short video series about the four stressful phases of selling your home. This video is about phase three of the four phases of selling your home. I'm a real estate agent with a PhD in psychology. I help families get through the four stressful phases of selling a home with less frustration and confusion, less anxiety and fear. I help you have more confidence during the sales process and will teach you what you should expect during each of these phases. You will want to know more about these four phases before you begin the sales process if you are considering selling your home in San Diego. I cover numerous tips to help you reduce your stress and your family's stress too. If you haven't seen the phase one or phase two videos yet, be sure to watch them so you know what to expect during each stage and to avoid making mistakes that can be very costly. Let's learn more about phase three now. The selling process is very much like a roller coaster ride. In this series about the four phases of selling your home, you will learn how the decision to sell your home creates a cycle of emotional ups and downs, which can cause you and your family a lot of stress and exhaustion. During the first stressful phase of the ride, you will ask yourself multiple questions that eventually lead you to making the final decision to sell your home. Phase one is filled with confusion and feeling unsettled and needing quality answers that eventually lead you to being ready to sell your home. The second stressful phase includes the physical labor of preparing your home for sale, including repairs, renovating, removing items from the home, donating items you no longer want, and packing up the home. You select a real estate agent to guide you into the launching and marketing of your home in this phase. You will also find this phase very exhausting, loaded with emotion and hard work as you get your home ready for buyers to see. Once you have placed your home on the market, you enter into the third stressful phase of selling your home. This is the phase where you worry and you wait. This phase is filled with high tension for you and your family as you worry about getting your home sold and you wait for everything to happen. This is a stressful time because you have no control over the buyer and their activities. You worry whether your agent will do their job to keep everything in the transaction moving forward so you can sell your home. This makes everyone involved feel anxious and on edge. In the worrying and waiting phase, you experience fear and stress because you do not have control over when a buyer shows up or how long it takes for them to complete the purchase of your home. At the beginning of this phase, you are still recovering from the exhaustion of preparing your home and launching it for sale. You packed up unwanted items and donated them out of your home. You cleaned up your home so buyers would like it, and now you are ready for them to show up but you realize that there is an unknown factor you cannot predict, and it leads you straight into the worrying and waiting phase. You worry. You worry that buyers will not come and see your home. You worry that they will not like your home enough to write an offer. You worry that your home will not sell on time, that you will not get an offer, that you will not get the right price if they do make an offer, that you will not get a qualified buyer who can actually purchase your home. You worry that buyers will not treat your home with respect. Things might get stolen, doors and windows may not be locked, and they tell your agent why they don't like your home. You worry that you may have to reduce your price to get activity. And you worry that your agent will not negotiate for you the right price or the right terms. There is daily pressure on everyone in your household to keep the home tidy as you wait for buyers to show up to see your home. You hope that the first buyer is the only buyer so you don't have to keep having strangers in your home while you're at work or making you leave the home until they're done looking at it. You may all be inconvenienced either way. And it is scary to have strangers traipse through your home. You feel intimidated and you worry whether they like your home enough to make an offer. 
You are still tired from getting your home prepared. And now you feel like you have a pan sitting on the back burner of your stove, cooking on low all of the time. It is always in the back of your mind as you worry about everything, while none of it is in your control. One of my clients told me that she hated making her bed. She reported that she had made her bed every day since the home was on the market, and it was the first time in years she had made the bed that often. She couldn't wait until she could stop. One of my clients had to take her aging dog out of the home every time a buyer came to see the home. She had to buy a harness to lift him because he weighed 70 pounds, and he had become so stressed out by being moved out of the home for long periods of time, he got sicker and passed away as the transaction was closing. Another client had three small children. She found it so difficult to pack up the children to get them out of the home that she would be angry at me every time I informed her that a buyer wanted to see the home. The waiting phase begins as you wait for agents to call to schedule the buyers to come see your home. You worry if they will show up. You wait for more buyers to come. If you have a lot of buyers showing up but you do not receive any offers, you worry. If you have a few buyers and no offers, you worry. You are online for one week and your agent talks to you about adjusting your price. You worry during the time you are waiting. What should we do about the price? Your agent tells you to wait another week to see if you get an offer. You wait and you worry about how long you should wait. You decide to make a price adjustment and then you wait again for buyers to show up. After waiting for buyers and making price adjustments, you finally get an offer. You worry whether the buyer is really qualified to buy your home. You move forward, however, and send them a counteroffer through your agent. And you wait to see if the buyer will accept your terms. And you worry they won't. The buyer sends you a counter to your terms. You create another counter and wait again for them to accept your counter to their terms. You worry whether the buyer is just wasting your time and just playing house. And then you finally get an accepted offer. And then you wait again for the buyer to perform their investigations. You have to wait for 17 days while they complete their inspections, read the seller disclosures, and finish up their investigations. Then you wait for them to sign off so you can move forward. You worry they will find something that they don't like or run into a problem with your house during their inspections, and then they decide to cancel the escrow. You wait for the lender to confirm that the buyer can actually qualify for the loan, and you worry if they don't qualify that you will have to cancel. Now you've lost time while being off the market when other buyers could have been falling in love with your home. You are constantly worrying and waiting during this phase. You wait for the appraiser to call you to schedule the appraisal. You worry that it won't appraise for the agreed upon price. You then have to wait for the results of the appraisal. You worry whether the buyer will ask you for a lot of repairs you don't want to do. You wait for the request for repairs to be negotiated. You become emotional when they ask you for repairs because you put up with these broken items for a long time, never fixing them. And now you feel like they are taking advantage of you asking for the repairs to be done. You may be involved in your own escrow buying your next home, and you have to use the money from the sale of this home to qualify. You worry if this buyer doesn't qualify to buy, you will lose the new home your family has fallen in love with. You have to wait for this buyer to sign off on their loan and appraisal so you can qualify for your new loan. You wait and wait and finally the buyer is approved for their loan on your home. The appraisal has come in at value. 
The request for repairs is resolved and the buyer signs off on all of their requirements to complete the purchase of your home. Meantime, you are doing your own inspections on the home you want to buy. You are now waiting for your appraisal on the new home to come in at the agreed upon value. You are the one requesting repairs from the seller. You are worrying and waiting for all of these requirements to be fulfilled so you can breathe. Sometimes things go wrong. A buyer doesn't qualify. An appraisal doesn't come in at the right value. A problem is found during the inspection. The buyers walk away and the home you loved can't be purchased. These create worry and you are forced to wait until all of these requirements or contingencies are completed for everyone and it may take a lot longer than you originally planned. Once the waiting period for all of the inspections, the appraisal, the loan, and the disclosures has been completed and the buyers sign off, you'll wait once again for the lender to get the loan documents ready for the buyer to sign in order to fund their loan. You can slow down your worrying about your house now. Although sometimes things can be delayed for one reason or another. Generally, it takes the lender one to two weeks to finalize all of the conditions they require from the buyer. Then they send out the loan docs for the buyer to review. Then they have another waiting period allowing them time to cancel the loan. And finally, they sign the documents for the loan. You wait for this to pass and you worry a little bit less. You are not done yet because you have to wait one more time until the title company actually hears that the buyer's loan has been funded. They go to the county recorder's office the day it's funded or the next day, depending upon the time of day it funds, to record the title to your home in the new buyer's name. You have to wait to hear from the title company or your agent who hears from escrow that your home has been recorded in their name and you are no longer the owner. The worrying and waiting stage can also be filled with frustration, problems, delays, heartache, and stress as well. The worrying can be legitimate if things go wrong. Crack slabs need fixing. Bad real estate agents need to be managed by good agents to get the transaction closed. Condos sometimes don't qualify for the government loan they said they qualified for and they have to be recertified. This causes delays for loan approval, which delays the close. And buyers back out during the escrow. Real estate agents don't do their job, so things are stalled until resolved. Waiting periods often go longer than expected because of delays. Buyers sometimes don't qualify for loans, although their lenders say they do. Appraisals sometimes don't come in at the right value, so there is negotiating between the buyer and the seller, or someone cancels and you have to start over. Real estate is truly a roller coaster ride of emotional ups and downs. Real estate agents and lenders often feel the heartache too when things don't go as expected. Hopefully they act professionally about the losses and problems they have to solve when things do not work out for them either. However, not every real estate agent is a pro. Many are emotionally volatile and immature. They can be the cause of delays too, like not getting paperwork to their clients to sign off or causing disputes over the commission with the seller. I have had to work with many unprofessional agents in transactions, figuring out how to work around them to get the home closed for my seller or buyer. And worrying and waiting is part of the real estate agent's world too. Helping you through phase three, the worrying and waiting phase. You will want to watch the first two videos describing phase one and two of the series so you are already applying the powerful tips in these videos to get through those stages with the least amount of stress. Here are some more great strategies to use in phase three. 
Expect to worry and wait. Expect the worrying period to be filled with anxiety and fear. Invite your family to watch this video several times so they will know what to expect during this phase. Plan fun things to do that will keep you and your family appropriately distracted during this worrying and waiting period. Take a time out from the waiting and go on a weekend getaway or stay in your PJs and watch movies with your family all weekend. Plan a break from the worry. Explain the waiting phase to your family. Have all adults in your home watch the four videos in this series so they are educated about what to expect. Tell your children that there are a lot of things that need to get done when you sell a home and buy a home. Make a wall chart together defining each step that needs to be completed before you move to the next step. Do a chart for the sale of your home and one for the buying of your new home. Celebrate when you mark off every step with a prize or an activity. Simplify the chart for your children. Write steps like get the bank to loan the buyer money. Get the bank to accept the home price. Help the buyer learn more about our home, etc. Do a chart for the purchase of your new home with the similar terms, such as get the bank to loan us money, etc. Recognize that you will be out of sync during the waiting phase, feeling like time is either speeding by or slowing down based upon what you are worrying about or waiting for. Keep a calendar filled with projects you can do when you have a spare minute. Keep your list of tasks ongoing so you can cross them off and enjoy a sense of accomplishment when you have completed one of them. Share this joy with your family. Talk to your real estate agent to make sure they understand the worrying and waiting phase you are going through. Tell them when you are experiencing extra pressure based on the task requiring deadlines or other demands related to your work or your family. Get them to help you to extend the deadline, if possible, or provide assistance from those who can solve the real estate problem. Ask your real estate agent to check in daily or every other day to keep you posted on the progress of the buyers and to keep you calm. Ask your real estate agent to give you a checklist of all of the activities and timelines that occur during the selling and the buying process. Ask your real estate agent to introduce you in advance to the professionals involved in escrow, title, and any other service professionals when you are selling or buying your home. Make sure you feel comfortable with the lending team when you are buying your home. Get contact information from them so you can call these professionals if you have questions your agent cannot answer for you. Organize your moving boxes with labels. Write out a blueprint for where each box will go in the new home. Create a drawing and color codes for each room so the movers know where to put each box. Have a master list of where each box will go along with the contents. Draw out a map of where the furniture and large items will go. Have a special area in the garage or one large room for all items the movers don't know what to do with. If you cannot find an item, you can go to that room and locate it, and then you can have the movers use their manpower to move it to the right location. Schedule movers in advance and discuss your proposed schedule with them. Outline any potential delays, creating a backup plan. Select a backup mover if you think you might need an alternative moving company. You may want to set up friends to help you in advance if delays have caused cancellation of professional movers. Calendar in a time with your children to make special memories during this phase. Make a special meal with your children, invite their friends, cook together, make placemats, select a special theme for the night like an Italian restaurant theme. Record a movie of your night and share it on YouTube for their friends. Make a map of where things are located in the new neighborhood. On the map, show where your home is, where there is a special restaurant they'll like, where their new school is located, parks, stores, maybe family members, whatever's important in the new neighborhood. 
If you visit the area before you move, drive around the area with your map and show your children where everything is located in person and on the map. Hang the map in the room so they can feel more comfortable about their future. Take pictures of the new home you are buying or moving into. Invite your children to help you figure out where the furniture will go in each room. Ask them to help you decide what items they want to decorate with in their own room. Get your children to select activities they want to take with them when you move to keep them busy during the move. Hire a caregiver to watch them when you are busy with paperwork and inspections so they are not in the way. Let them do special activities during this time. Plan with your family a special dinner on the first night you move into your new home. It can be pizza and eating it by candlelight or barbecuing hamburgers and sitting on the floor with the tablecloth you packed just for the occasion. Make sure you take action immediately to provide the lender, your real estate agent, and escrow officer the documents they request. There are many reasons for delays in a transaction during this phase. However, the faster you return paperwork, the more likely you are assisting the real estate professionals with the information that will keep the process moving for approval and closing. For example, if you are asked by a lender for proof of down payment, you need to do whatever you can to get that information to the lender ASAP. Taking your time creates a domino effect which causes one delay after the other. Make sure you read all documents thoroughly and answer all questions honestly and carefully. One mistake on your part, such as leaving information blank or incorrectly answering it, can cause delays to deadlines when paperwork needs to be corrected or completed. You should call the agent, escrow officer, or lender to get the right answer before you turn it back in, or send it in with your question on sticky notes so you get the forms completed on time and you can keep the process moving forward. Email the person you're sending them to as a follow-up to make sure the blanks get filled in to avoid delays. It is better to ask a hundred questions from the professionals so you get the right information than to assume everyone will take care of the blanks and then you learn that the question you left blank had slowed down the entire process because of errors. Expect to be tired. Expect your family to be cranky and complain while you are in this phase. Worrying and waiting is what you do a lot of in this phase. Expect delays so you are not angry or freaked out when delays happen. Put a plan in place for these delays so you are ready for them. Tell your family you expect things might go wrong so they will expect delays too. Tell your family that you may be distracted during this phase so they have permission to remind you to take a mental break and they can ask you to pay attention to their needs. Try to keep as much routine in your schedule so things remain as normal and stable as possible. Even when there are extra duties to complete, like packing and providing documents to the real estate professionals. Plan out what you are going to do to celebrate on the day your home is sold and the title is transferred. You will want to cry, laugh, smile, or sleep all at the same time. Plan out how you will celebrate when you get the news that your new home has finally become your own. A true story about phase three, the worrying and waiting phase. I helped one of my clients find a condo they loved and wanted to buy. The seller accepted our offer. During the inspections, we found a cracked slab. My client still wanted to buy the home, but they had to wait until the slab was fixed by the HOA, which took about 30 days to repair. During the 30-day wait, the buyers took their time to get the paperwork back to the lender. This delayed the loan approval. Once the slab was fixed, the lender ordered the appraisal. 
the appraiser got to the condo and discovered there was no key to get into the condo. That caused another delay of two weeks before he could return to the condo to complete the appraisal. The condo sale was delayed by an extra 60 days because of the cracked slab repairs, the extra time the buyers took to get the paperwork back to the lender, the recertification process of the complex, and the missing key from the lockbox slowing down the completion of the appraisal. Several of these problems could have been avoided if the paperwork had been turned in quicker so the lender could have discovered that the complex wasn't certified sooner and they could have worked on it during the 30-day slab repair. The other agent got angry about the delays, but she didn't have the key in the lockbox. She wanted to blame the lender and me for these delays, but she didn't want to deal with the crack slab to begin with. The buyers were upset because they couldn't plan their move to hire a moving truck for a certain day, and yet they were all a part of the reason for the delays. We could call this phase the delay phase because it was much more than worrying and waiting phase for everyone involved in this transaction. Let me help you with phase three, the worrying and waiting phase. I am Dr. Dina, the doctor that makes house calls. I am familiar with every stage of the home sale process and I love helping families get through the worrying and the waiting phase when selling and buying a home. I like educating and supporting families with information so they can plan how they can be less stressed during these phases. I've helped a lot of families with real estate and every one of them experienced the worrying and the waiting phase because it's a natural part of every sale. I offer hundreds of tips to help families get through these stressful stages. If you or a family member needs assistance with the sale of a San Diego home, feel free to contact me to answer all of your questions. I will guide you through every step of the sale. You can email me at doc at dinastacer.com or call or text me at 858 858- 229-8072. You can also begin your home search online in San Diego by going to San Diego searchforhomes.com. This website offers you pictures and details about the homes for sale in San Diego County.